Hi, my name is Francisco and I want to give you some suggestions on how you can write the methodology chapter in your dissertation or your thesis. So one of the first things to keep in mind is uh, what is the purpose of the methodology chapter? And actually, this is uh, one of the most important chapters in your entire work because um, what, it, what it's going to tell the reader essentially is the step-by-step -step that you went through to collect the data necessary in order to address your research aim. So um, this is a chapter that has to be very well written because if you made wrong decisions in your methodology, that's going to compromise the rest of your work. That means that you collect the data which is not valid, so you, you're not addressing your research aim. So all the results that you have, the conclusions that you're going to come up with are just going to be weak or not going to be uh, valid. So it's a very important chapter and it's very important that you get uh, most decisions correctly, or all of them. So the first thing that I would suggest you to, uh, to discuss in the chapter is the, the research design. So start by discussing research designs and then following that, uh, making clear for the reader what was the research design for your particular study. And you're going to know that by reflecting on the nature of your research aim or the objectives that you have set to address that aim. So do the objectives, do they have a descriptive nature? Do they have an exploratory nature? Do they have a causal nature? And the nature of the study uh, will indicate obviously what is the research design um, that you should use or that you have used. Once you define your research design, the following thing to discuss will be your method. Uh, yeah, so methods are logical sequencing of steps that you go through in order to collect data with a particular nature. And each research design allows for different methods. Um, so make sure that you uh, tell very clearly to the reader what was the research uh, methods that you have used for the objectives that had uh, data collection. Once you explained uh, in detail your uh, method, I would suggest you discuss your measurements. In other words, what did you specifically measure in your study? Yeah, and um, sometimes some students, if you did an exploratory study, uh, perhaps you came up with questions, but those questions were trying to measure what exactly. So in your measurements, the idea is not that you list your questions, yeah? You are gonna have your, your questionnaires in your uh, appendix, but the idea on this part of this chapter is to explain what you actually measured. So uh, were you measuring attitude or satisfaction or quality or risk or uh, effective responses or, or credibility or trust, yeah? And if you were measuring one of those things, how did you measure it? Uh, if you use the predefined scale, who is the author? How many items did it have? Uh, if you use a, a liquor type scale to measure those items, how many points did it have? Was it a three point item uh, scale? Was it a five point item scale? Was it a seven, a ten, a, a hundred, which, how, whichever how many points you used um, to measure that? Make all of those things really clear so that the reader will know exactly what you measured, because those elements that you measured are the ones that you're going to be discussing later on on your next chapter, which your your um, results chapter. So if you measure all of those factors, they have to come back again on your results chapter with the results for each one that you measure. It's as obvious as that. Then I would also suggest you uh, discuss your sample. So what was the population of your study? What was the sampling technique? Um, that you uh, used in order to define the sample for that study. Then I would suggest you discuss the data collection process. So how was the data collection actually? Was it online? Was it offline? Um, if it was online, um, how did it go? For when did you start? When did you end? Um, if you uh, distributed uh, online questionnaires, in which forums did you do that? With um, How frequently did you do that? If you, the data collection was outside, when was it, in which scenario, in which context, and so on. Then I would suggest you include a, a topic there on uh, reliability and validity. And uh, this is a topic that unfortunately the students get, the, get it wrong very, very uh, often. So make sure that you go through again validity, that you're measuring what you intend to measure, yeah. Um, the reliability which has to do with your measurements, yeah, the scales that you have used or the questions that you have defined to measure those factors. And that's, that's a really important part because a study that is not valid or reliable, it makes absolute no sense. So it's very important that you tell the reader that you are aware of that, that you're measuring what you intend to measure and that you use measurements that are, that are important and that are reliable and how you try to address that. And of course, if you have questions on that, make sure to do further research and discuss it with your supervisor. 
Another thing that I would like to highlight is uh, if you did a causal study, uh, in other words, if you had a, an experiment in which you had a field or laboratory experiment, um, there are some additional things that would be relevant to uh, explain for the reader. For example, the equipment that you used uh, or the products that you use, for example. So I did quite a few studies with uh, virtual reality using uh, virtual reality goggles. And um, it's really important to explain which model did I use, uh, which apps did I have it, which setting did I use with, a, with that equipment. Because always having in the back of your mind, if someone wants to replicate your study exactly as you did, they have to go through your methodology chapter and be able to replicate exactly as you did. So uh, if you're doing an experiment, it's really important to make clear which equipments that you used. Another thing which is relevant if you're doing an experiment is uh, to define your independent variable and your dependent variable. So your independent uh, variable, what was your um, experimental manipulation? Um, how many conditions that you have? Yeah, how many levels that you have in your experimental manipulation? And uh, your dependent variables. So what were you um, exactly trying to measure? and also discussing the, the controlling of extraneous variables. So which factors did you try to control in the setting to have a, a high internal validity in your experiment? So generally, those would be the things that I would suggest for you to include in your methodology chapter. So just going through really quickly, first of all, uh, research designs, that you explain that and which one that you have, uh, what was the design of your study, uh, the method that you use or the, or the methods that you used uh, for your study, uh, what were the measurements, what exactly you were trying to measure. Don't copy and paste questions or items, that's not the purpose for it. In the end, you can attach in the appendix your questionnaire, but the main, the most important is to tell the concepts that you were trying to measure and how you measured them. Uh, the sample of your study, so what was the population, what was the sampling technique, uh, that you explain the data collection process, that you explain uh, validity and reliability. And if you did an experiment, explain a few additional things like uh, manipulation of independent variables, controlling of extraneous variables, your dependent variables, uh, obviously. And if you used uh, equipments or products or any particular instruments, that you tell exactly the model that you had, because if someone wanted to replicate exactly as you did, that they would be able to do so. Yeah, and to finalize, uh, one thing that you could do um, while you're doing your work is that I'm sure is going to inspire you is a, just make yourself like a nice lemonade or something and listen to a song from the Beatles called A Day in the Life. It's a really experimental song that has two completely different moments connected by an instrumental uh, part with an orchestra, but it's a lovely song by the Beatles, one of my favorite bands of all times. All the absolute best. Take care. Bye-bye.